Good afternoon. My presentation today is about observability. And more precisely, is observability can be a game changer for your application performance. You work on application every day. Whether you are a dev or an ops, there is a business that depends on that application. This app may be a monolith, or maybe it's in microservices, or maybe it's even running on Kubernetes. Look at me in the eyes and tell me if it hasn't happened to you more than once that it's your customers or your users who have informed you of a problem with the application. The worst case scenario is that not only have you been notified on the problem by your customers, but that your monitoring tools only provide you noise and don't help you troubleshoot your application. Who has already experienced this scenario? Oh. And I imagine that it may still happen to you. My name is Steph and I'm a services architect at Datadog where I spent most of my time helping our new customer to get on board observability and more specifically Datadog. But the introduction I'm going to give you today is about different concepts and toolings that have emerged in recent years to help you understand the performance of your applications. I have a bad news. So, if you want to understand the performance of your applications, chances are that logs and metrics, which have been at the very heart of many monitoring tools, are not in us anymore. Let's talk about observability. Observability. Some may think observability is just a buzzword but there is nothing new here that monitoring doesn't already do. Let's dive in. This is a relatively classical application architecture, or at least it was, on one machine, one application, and on another machine, a database. How this type of architecture used to be monitored? We have application and database logs locally, and we collect system metrics on this machine. High CPU and high memory usage generally triggers an alert. This alert most likely woke up more than one of you during the night to investigate what was happening on this machine, what is the impact on the application, and what caused the problem. But was there just one problem? After all, an application consumes memory and CPU. There is nothing wrong about that. On the other hand, it is not uncommon to have users who come to complain about latencies on the application without anything wrong being observed, neither in the logs nor in the metrics. So it's a problem. Observability is a change of perspective. In the way we observe our applications, we place ourselves in the user's shoes. If we notice latency in the application, what we call symptoms, then we look for what may be the cause. This cause can be a high CPU usage but a high CPU usage will not necessarily cause latency in the application. So we don't want to be alerted on causes, but on symptoms. But to be able to embrace the user perspective, we need other tools that go beyond logs and metrics. I will go into detail about the other signals available to us, but first I will dwell on logs and metrics for a few seconds if you allow me. One thing so, I use the word signal. 
What's a signal? A signal is almost an official term to talk about an observation of, of the state of a running system. And this term is almost a standard since it is the word that OpenTelemetry has chosen to talk about it. The most common signals are, of course, logs, which are structured events, and metrics, which are measurements at a specific point in time. But there are others. The metric I talked about earlier were system metrics, but do they really allow us to observe the state of an application? Obviously not. System metrics allow us to observe the state of a system that hosts an application. Therefore, they are very important, but collecting metrics directly from the application is just as important. By instrumenting an application, we can collect runtime metrics, but also business metrics. So what is instrumentation? I think you already know what it is. It's adding additional code into the existing code base to perform specific action during the execution. Most of you have been instrumenting your application for logging for years already. Today, it's just as easy to instrument an application to provide metrics as it is for logs. Why would you want to deny yourself such a thing? There is no standard for logging yet, but a library can help you in normalizing logs of a single service, an application composed of different services, or even all the services of an organization. Of course, it requires a bit of governance. I also want to point out that in this field, OpenTelemetry is trying to create a real standard for logs. As for metrics, if Prometheus allows you to easily instrument your application and has become, in a few years, a kind of standard for cloud-native application, I advise you, however, to take a look at OpenTelemetry, which is an open-source standard that all vendors agree to adopt. This means that an instrumented application with OpenTelemetry doesn't need to be refactored if you decide to change from vendor A to vendor XYZ. However, some things have changed in recent years. How your applications are deployed, how often they are deployed, whether they are distributed and whether they are able to scale in and out. The fact that they are dynamic and increasingly ephemeral has changed the way they need to be monitored. How, for instance, to statically collect information on applications able to scale automatically. You just can't. How to find a particular error log or in a distributed system. There is no place where you can connect to your infrastructure that allows you to answer such a question. But you already know, and probably you already use a centralized logging solution. Furthermore, the volume of data that these applications produce is also unprecedented. Because of this, the most useful information is sometimes not in the data themselves, but in the trends they express. It's common to have errors that are just background noise and don't affect the user experience, because your application knows how to cope with them. But background noise could hide some more serious problems. A new error following a rollout, the increase in the frequency of a specific error pattern are examples where the statistical analysis of the data gives us more information than the data themselves. Our tools need to provide us with this information too. But there is another type of 
challenge that is difficult to tackle just with logs and metrics. Let's see together the following problem. The first user's request doesn't encounter any problem, but at the same time, the second user request encounters a latency on service B. How to troubleshoot the latency that affected the later? Let me introduce you to another signal, traces and distributed tracing. Are any of you already familiar with application moni monitoring tools such as Jaeger or Zipkin? Yeah, great. So what's a trace? A trace is a collection of structured event called spans. And they represent a single transaction. I use the word transaction, but it should not be understood in the sense of a transaction in a database, but as the round trip of a user request in your application. This is a flame graph. It's in this format that traces are most often represented because it is very understand, easy to understand what is happening there. A trace is read from left to right, starting from the top. At the very top is what we call the root span. It is generated when the transaction enters the application and ends when the result of the transaction is returned to the user. The x-axis represents the time and therefore the root span tells us about the time it took for the transaction to return a response to the user. Below, you can see different spans. They represent the interaction between the different services involved in the transaction. At a glance, you can see which took a long time to run and which produced an error. An interesting aspect of traces is also its ability to capture the stack trace of a service that encounters an error. Another important point, because traces represent a single transaction, that means it represents the path that this request followed in your distributed system. Correlated with metrics and logs, it allows you to understand precisely what may have caused latency in your application. In example one, the transaction went through a service hosted on a host with high CPU usage, which generated some latencies for the user. In example two, a downstream service encountered an error that also generated latency. Pretty neat, isn't it? Some other tools allow us to go even further in this investigation. Let's talk about the continuous profiling introduced by Google years ago. Who knows what continuous profiling is? Okay, continuous profiler is a powerful product. It gives you insight into the system resource consumption of your applications. You can see CPU time, memory allocation, file I.O., garbage collection, network throughput, and many more. Signals from the continuous profiler are also represented as a flame graph. However, it reads a bit differently. Here is a non-exhaustive list of problems that continuous profiling helps you to solve. Resource consumption, mainly memory and CPU, which generally helps you significantly reduce your cloud provider bill. Latency optimization, identifying the functions that take the most time in the code, improved code quality, oh, sorry, including identifying complex or redundant sections in code, detection of concurrency issues, and many more. Most of these tools were designed for monitoring backend services. But the user experience, however, starts in the front end. If you take a trace, for instance, a trace is only generated when 
a transaction encounters the first instrumented service. The sooner the better. So why not directly in your front end? Because without correlation between what happens in the front end and what happens in the back end, it is sometimes difficult to determine which part of your application the latency belongs to. Fortunately, things are changing in this field and there are no libraries to help you instrument your web or mobile application too. And I know for sure that front-end services become as much complicated than back-end services. Since we are talking about web applications, there, is, there are also metrics at your front-end level that allow you to measure the user experience. These metrics are known as core web vitals. To better understand how they work, here is an analogy. Everybody knows what blood pressure is. However, in order to know if everything is okay, you need a range. By measuring your blood pressure, you are able to know if you are LC or if you have hypertension. The same applies to the front-end performance. And Google has spotted three relevant metrics to assess if your front-end if your front-end operates smoothly. The core web vitals. Here is a brief overview of what they bring. The late the largest contentful paint or LCP measures loading performance. If it's between 2.5 seconds, uh, if it's less than 2.5 seconds, the performance is good. If it's between 2.5 seconds and 4 seconds, that, that means that your application needs some improvement. But if you are un above 4 seconds, you considerably, you considerably impact your user experience. The first input delay, or FID, measure interactivity. And here you can see the range that applies to this measure. And finally, cumulative layout shift, or CLS, measures visual stability. These measures are important for obvious reasons. A bad user experience inevitably drives your customer away in favor of a competitor. And I'm sure no one wants that. Our observability tools are not fixed. They evolve as our software stacks evolve and become more complex. I obviously don't have time to talk about this astonishing ecosystem in such a short time. But ask, your, ask yourself this question. How can I ensure my customers have the best possible user experience on my application? And when it's not the case, how can I troubleshoot my application efficiently to reduce the mean time to detect and the mean time to recover? Observability still have some challenges ahead but the bias it has taken to place itself from the user's perspective is which is a real game changer, allowing you to act on issues that really impact your users. Thank you. <laughs>